and girls, welcome back to my channel. I am such a huge fan of space exploration. My dream is coming true. I am at Cape Canaveral here in Florida and I am just over the moon because I am in John F. Kennedy Space Center here and I, I tell you, I can't breathe. I'm just so, so excited because this is the most important space center in the world. The Gemini project, the Mercury project, the Apollo mission all happened here at John F. Kennedy Space Center. And in 1969, the world watched as Michael Collins, Buzz Aldrin, and Neil Armstrong blast off to the moon here at John F. Kennedy Space Center. I'm gonna spend the whole day here. Let's go and explore. Guided tour to KSC started as far back as 1963 by NASA Administrator James Webb. An average of 1.7 million visitors stream through KSC annually before the pandemic. After years of uncertainty, the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex is slowly returning to normal. I am strolling through the Rocket Garden and this is where they put all the historical rocket that has launched into space. And the latest rocket is called Delta II. Uh, someone suggested that uh, a jaws, uh, a jaws teeth should be drawn on um, the top of the rocket. In the building dedicated to heroes and legends, relive the thrills and dangers of America's earliest space mission and embark on an awe-inspiring journey designed to spark thought about how human define a hero. Experience the dawn of space age with astronaut pioneers through actual artifacts including a redstone rocket suspended overhead and a unique close-up look at Gemini 9 capsule. Learn which quality defines hero before finding them among those inducted into the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame. So that was a presentation 
of the space shuttle mission here in NASA. It tells the story of how the spacecraft got designed and the launch's history. It was really amazing. so beautiful it looks like a whale beautifully designed aircraft i have ever seen and you can use this to fly off to space and come back again so it's all reusable 33 missions incredible incredible feat thousands of brains and minds and dedication to build this isn't that incredible i mean i mean i can't laud science enough we need to believe in science Atlantis is the fourth operational and second to last space shuttle to be built. Its maiden flight was from 3rd to 7 October 1985. A total of 156 individuals flew with Space Shuttle Atlantis over the course of its 33 missions. The shuttle also flew crew members arriving and departing the Mir Space Center and the International Space Center. By the end of its mission, Atlantis has orbited Earth a total of 4,848 times, traveling nearly 203 million kilometers or more than 525 times the distance from the Earth to the Moon. to the space center Atlantis it's so cool <laughs> a little bit of exercise ah. Ah. Woo, here we go ah. 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 well there's still gravity so it's not like it's a piece of cake or something <laughs> here I go ah. literally crawling through this tunnel which is like absolutely transparent and I'm like three story high. Oh, look at that. I'm in space. Look at that. I'm in space. I made it. On the ground level here, you will find the Friends and Fallen Heroes exhibit commemorating the 14 astronauts lost in both Space Shuttle Challenger and Columbia disasters. The Challenger disaster was the first fatal accident in the United States space program that occurred on January 28, 1986 when the space shuttle broke apart 73 seconds into its flight, killing all seven crew members on board, while the Columbia disaster occurred on February 1st, 2003, when the shuttle disintegrated as it re-entered the atmosphere, also killing all seven member crew. I remember both days as I watched in horror on live television halfway across the world. I'm so excited. I'm just, I'm just so excited. Oh, please, thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. So here at KSC, you can actually meet a real astronaut and talk to them. It's called Chat with an Astronaut. Today, the astronaut that I will be meeting is Norm. Norm Thargard is his name. 
He sounds like a Nordic god, and they even they even serve food. I'm still very shocked. They serve food in here, but they also serve wine. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so glad I'm here. This is really a good treat. Well done, NASA. Norm This is mostly to give you an opportunity to ask any questions you might have, but I will give you a hopeful brief background. In Jacksonville, Florida, 1961, June of 61, I entered Florida State in September of 61. Now, let me tell you a bit about the astronaut that we have the privilege of meeting today. Norman Earl Thargard was born in 1943 right here in Florida, Jacksonville. He attended Florida State University, earning his master's degree in engineering science in 1965 and 66. In 1978, he was selected as an astronaut candidate by NASA. A veteran of five space flights, he has logged over 140 days in space. His credential is nothing short of impressive. He's the first American to ride to space on board a Russian vehicle and can be considered the first American cosmonaut. He did this on March 14, 1995 in the Suez. TM-21 spacecraft for the Russian Mir-18 mission. Thargat first flew on the crew of STS-7, which launched from Kennedy Space Center, Florida, on June 18, 1983. This was the second flight for the Orbiter Challenger and the first mission with a crew of five persons. Dr. Thargard also served as payload commander on STS-42 on board Space Shuttle Discovery in 1992. He retired in 1996. And it was a delight to listen to his space exploration stories. I have been to many conferences in my life and this will forever be on the top. Be your tour escort for the first part of your trip today. For the final leg of my trip, I am off to the Apollo Saturn V Center. To get there, you'll need to take the center bus. On the way, you will pass by the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB. The VAB is designed to assemble large pre manufactured space vehicle components, such as the massive. Saturn V and the Space Shuttle and stack them vertically onto one of the three mobile launcher platforms used by NASA. As of July 2021, the first Space Launch System SLS rocket is being assembled inside in preparation for the Artemis 1 mission. When it was completed in 1966, it broke many records. Because of its need to house the Saturn V rocket at 129 million cubic feet, it is one of the largest buildings in the world by volume, and this has been in my travel bucket list since high school. The VAB is also the largest single-story building in the world. You can basically see it when you are driving towards Cape Canaveral. That's how huge this building is. For the comfort 
safety and viewing pleasure of all our guests, we ask that you silence cell phones and refrain from flash photography for the duration of our presentation. The crew of Apollo 8. Through those doors, you'll find the firing room. Launch control. So I just watched the Apollo program presentation here at the Saturn V Center. I mean, this is one of the most dangerous mission in the world and many, many uh, astronauts sacrificed their life for this exploration. It's an incredible story. Well done. My God, what an incredible story. The presentation was just mind blowing. I mean, they showed the lift off of the rockets and the, the, the special effect that they have, the window. The window behind where I was sitting was basically shaking. Incredible presentation. I really, really enjoyed it. It's the launching of the rocket. The effects were so real. And you get to see all the different controlling center while they were operating to make the launch a success. I mean, this presentation is out of the world. I mean, you really have to be here to see it and experience it yourself. And this is it. This is the most complex machine ever built by man. This is the Sand 5 rocket. This rocket is absolutely gigantic. I'm gonna show you how big it is. The Saturn V rocket is truly a spectacle of human engineering and space travel. More than 400,000 people have helped build this massive machine. A total of 13 Saturn V rockets were launched between 1967 and 1971. This is the only three remaining in the United States. The Saturn V rocket first stage carries a whopping 203,000 gallon of kerosene fuel and 318,000 gallons of liquid oxygen which are needed for combustion. At 363 feet, 111 meters long, it is 60 feet or 18 meters taller than the Statue of Liberty in New York. I highly suggest you take a stroll under this show-stopping giant to fully appreciate the size and complexity of the largest rocket ever flown through space. Now, I want to talk to you about what you need to know before coming to the KSC because you've really got to plan your trip correctly. Now, let's start with tickets. So there are different types of tickets are available here at KSC and you must, you must, you must, you must buy your ticket online because there's going to be a very long line at the counter and it's best that you buy your ticket online and print them out. Please print out those tickets because they need the QR code to scan through the gate. You don't want to be looking for your phone while everybody's waiting in line. So do keep the line going by simply printing out your ticket. I would say the second tip I would give to you is eating time. If you are like me and visiting KSC at the most busiest time, there's really not a lot of places to eat. And the line at all these cafes and restaurants are insane. And especially during pandemic time, they don't have enough staff to cater for everyone. So I would suggest you to eat a huge meal before coming here. The third gift 
tip I would give to you is bring your own bottle of water because the lines are insane. I mean, it's very difficult to even get a bottle of water. So I would suggest you to bring your own water. I'm visiting KSC in winter time and I am hot. So you better bring sunscreen and hat and a sunglasses to protect yourself. I mean, I feel like in summer it's brutal, right? And also bring your power, power bank because you're gonna be taking picture all day long and like me, filming. So you better take your power bank with you because I feel like there's no plug here for you to recharge your laptop or your devices. It, it's not possible. It's just not possible to see everything in one day. So what you need to do is the first stop should always be the bus tour. The bus tour will take you to the Saturn V Center and that's the only way to go to the Saturn V Center and you don't want to miss it. So on your itinerary, you better take the bus tour first. Later. I also encourage you to book the chat with an astronaut. Now you have to pay extra to do the astronaut meeting but I highly highly recommend it because I think it's like once in a lifetime that you will have a chance to even talk to someone who's been to space. Like I don't know you but I don't know anybody who's been to space and it's really a truly a great experience to do that. You have to book those tickets really way in advance because they are sold out far in advance so boys and girls these are the tips that i will leave you when you um when you visit ksc and now you know the tips and the shortcuts when you come to ksc and i hope with these tips you will enjoy your journey here much better and as ronald reagan say the future belongs to the brave i'll see you in my next video and let's Brave on.